Tennessee to make this movie, and 20 years ago we showed it to a group of investors who were truly horrified. But, uh, the good thing is, is that after seeing it again, it's lost none of its um, rawness or edge. So um, uh, I, I have to say it, uh, it, it withstood the uh, test of time, and um, all I can say is Sam's gotten much nicer to his actors as an actresses over the years. Yes, I don't think Sharon Stone would have done half those gags with these two. So. Betsy and Sarah, I wanted to ask you, what point in your acting careers were you when you made The Evil Dead? And what did you think when you were first approached by Sam and Rob about making this kind of movie? Well, I thought they were crazy. They were nuts. They were loony bins. They really were. But I, had, I was just beginning. I was actually working and living in Detroit, and um, they, you had called me or called my agent and I met them pretty much just like it says in Bruce's book at a restaurant because I didn't trust them at all. <laughs> the audition was basically, let's see how you scream and what do you look like driving a car and that was it, pretty much. So I'm sure there were a lot of times when you wanted to burst out laughing at some of the effects. Um, some of the makeup things that you were being called on to do. Was that difficult at all to, in fact, play it straight and to make it look like you were horrified? Yeah, sometimes it was difficult because we usually shot at night, so therefore our whole clocks were off, you know, for what, 8, 10, 12 weeks. We never knew when we were going to shoot because it kind of depended on who was awake and what the light was like, <laughs> if the mask was ready. <laughs> and so when Sam and Rob would ask us to do something and they would explain it to us, we would just start laughing. I mean, you know, and then we want you to spit out the blood here, but it won't be blood. We'll just give you some strawberry daiquiri. That will tie you over. And then we want you to, to walk over across the room with the lenses in your eyes. But we'll guide you. We'll guide you. Don't worry. So, it's, yeah, it was yeah, you won't be able to see, but walk really fast over to where Bruce is. And, and there was that trust element. We won't hurt you, Betsy. We really won't hurt you. These are just fake themes. They won't hurt whatsoever. I don't think either one ever laughed when we were making No, it wasn't <laughs> funny at all. And, and making the masks, they had to put, put something all over our entire face and straws up our nose so that they could take a, a mask of our face. And, you thought you were going to suffocate do it, just doing that part of it. In fact, um, for any of you who know special effects, we were so primitive of that at that time that uh, we were actually doing molds with el elginite, just taking molds with plaster of Paris. So <laughs> people would be in their masks and suddenly steam would start to rise and they write on a little piece of paper, hot. <laughs> and then poor, poor Betsy, her, her eyelashes got stuck in the plaster of Paris trying to get the mask off. And, um, she ended up losing him in the battle, but um, it, it was all a big learning curve. So. <laughs> now, who were the Shimps? The, the quick story of Shimps comes from fake Shimp because the Three Stooges used to shoot three shirts at the same time. Well, in the making of uh, three um, Stooge shirts, Sh um, Shimp died, and they needed to get a fake Shimp to come in, and so he kind of concealed his face from the lens and ran around going, woo, -woo, woo The shooting on this went on for about a year and a half in groups and drafts and not everyone was available. We often had to get other people to play body parts flopping on the floor. That's the credit of fake shim that you see at the end of the, the uh, movie. When my body parts were scattered on the floor, <clears throat> that was actually my head and Rob's leg. That's right. And who else was in, in that scene? <laughs> there were three or four of us. That's how we spent New Year's 1980, so. <laughs> now I have to ask all three of you, were you at all surprised when uh, the movie became uh, a great hit called Favorite and, and spawned this series of two sequels and a whole fan base? Yes. <laughs> Could you elaborate? Well, I'm just kind of 
talked about a hiding now. I'm still in shock. When we made it, it, it still hadn't, it didn't really do anything for a long time. And, you know, I, I kind of blindfolded my parents when they came to see it. I didn't want them to really see it. And my wife saw it years and years before she ever met me and thought whoever made this movie should be put away for the rest of their lives. <laughs> I think the people who were most surprised were our investors because they never saw a nickel out of it for years after it was finished and 10 years or 8 years, something like that, before they started to get anything back. So the fact that it's now the gift that keeps giving, I think, is the big, they're the most surprised. You shot the film 16 millimeter. Yes, we did. So this is actually a blow-up, but much, much better sound than you probably heard when it first came out. Very much. As I said, the, the THX logo probably cost more than the whole movie. <laughs> Unfortunately, Sam can't be here tonight because he's um, working on how, how to get those pesky World Trade Centers out of Spider-Man right now and has a big reshoot coming up. And um, Bruce is in Louisville at a book signing, but um, we do have a project that we're working on together to um, go back to our independent roots and be able to do the things that um, you can't do on a big budget movie. So. Um, whether it's directly Evil Dead 4, um, it will be a Sam and Robin Bruce uh, collaboration with Star Bruce. I would like to thank the three of you for giving back here tonight as well. Thank you very much. Please join me once again in welcome to Mr. Rob Lambert, Peggy Baker. And you thank you to Angela and Dan and all of you for joining us here tonight. Hope to see you again soon here at the Theater.